What's up, guys? Welcome to the Social Media Entrepreneurs Podcast, teaching you how to become a full-time entrepreneur, leveraging modern-day social media strategies. I'm your host, Derek Vidal, and today I'm joined by Josh Ledgard. If you uh, recognize his name, it's because he has been on the show before. I think it was about 30 or 40 episodes, even, that we got into talking about growing your business very quickly using contests. So not just the, the normal giveaways you see on Instagram, like like this post and tag three friends, but uh, a very professional uh, giveaway builder that Josh has uh, built with his team. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to talk all about that today. Lots of new features and uh, different ways that you can grow your business through contests, not just giveaways, but all various sorts of contests. So uh, very exciting stuff today. And I wouldn't be surprised if you left with multiple <laughs> marketing campaign ideas that you uh, plan to run in the future. So uh, Josh, how's it going, my man? It's going great. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a big fan of Kickoff Labs. I've used uh, his products for uh, a little over a year now, and I, I've run uh, probably about 40 contests uh, between myself and uh, other students that I've helped uh, with his programs, and a lot of them have gone very, very well. So that's why I've stuck with just using Kickoff Labs, uh, because the functionality is really great and um, you know it makes the, the setup process very quick and easy. Uh, so there's some new features. Go ahead and tell me, Josh, of like just some of your staple features to start and then tell me of some of these new things that we'll, we should be expecting soon. Yeah, so thanks for thanks for asking. Um, absolutely. So Kickoff Labs, as you mentioned, is uh, a contest giveaway platform that can be used for all sorts of uh, all sorts of reasons. So I like to view it as a way to do engagement marketing. So a way for people to either grow a list from zero or to take an existing email list and give them something fun to do uh, as an opportunity to engage with them versus just like constantly throwing content or ads at them, which are, you know, both good things you can do for your business, but like to get them involved in something that's fun, that helps educate them about your product or gives away a product or, you know, just essentially gets them more engaged within your marketing. Um, and some of the tools that Kickoff Labs helps with that, like there's uh, a basic builder for these types of campaigns. We've always had, there's um, referral marketing. So you can have people refer friends as part of the campaign and they get extra entries in the contest or points they can use towards rewards that we can give away. So you could do a, a contest, but then also add the concept of reward saying like when people earn 10 points, you're going to give them a 20% discount coupon or, you know, give them a coupon just for entering so people can hit different milestones even during the giveaway and then everybody becomes a winner with those milestones um so we've had really like the the first thing i wanted to talk about is like those concepts we'd really only split up into into six very generic sounding campaign types so we called it like a boat either a bonus entry giveaway or reward level giveaway or a wait list that you are building um for for your product or you know just an email opt-in and those you know generic terms make a lot of sense to you know me um and probably like our team at kickoff labs because you know we were kind of mostly engineering tech guys and we look at things and say well you could take that kind of contest and turn it into any kind of contest um and so but the thing we realize when we start watching, you know, what customers are using the product for is most customers have like very specific or a much more specific goal in mind. Like they're like, I want to grow my Instagram channel, or I want to grow my YouTube channel. And people approach it with that concept. They don't approach it as like, I want to run a, a sweepstakes in order to like, they don't get to the in order to, it's just like, they're at the end goal of like, I want to grow this. And like, you know, just give me something that'll grow that. Um, and so one of the first changes we did in onboarding, uh, which is the experience you go through when you sign up for the product and you start walking through creating your, your, your campaign is instead of those very generic templates, we tried to make them more specific. The generic templates still exist, but now when you go and create it, it'll say like, hey, you know, if you're a YouTuber and you want to grow your YouTube channel, or you're just even a business that's really focusing on, you know, video marketing through YouTube or YouTube shorts, there's a campaign type um, called like YouTube growth. And you pick that campaign type and we're going to do some defaults for you there. So we're going to set up the YouTube actions, uh, that we support. So you know, an action for people to follow you on YouTube, or an action for people to watch a specific video an action for people to, you know, share your YouTube latest bit of YouTube content out there to make those actions 
something you don't have to think about. So you're not just picking like generic contest that has referrals and like, oh, what do I add now? Like, I want to grow my YouTube. I have to search around, like, is there a YouTube action? And like some people were finding it, which is how we came up with these contest types is the people that were finding it and building very specific, you know, giveaways targeted at channels, for example. And that's just one example is like a channel. Um, another example is like, we have people that are say like launching, you know, subscription boxes. So, you know, where you're getting a, a monthly or every other month box delivered to your house of some, some set of packages. And that was a very specific use case. And we had a lot of people coming in wanting to do it, but we didn't have a, a template that was optimized for, you know, the use case. We didn't have um, the set of actions set up. We didn't have the legal text set up for that use case. So they were having to go in and enter all of these things. And like, nobody wants to go spend their time filling out like text boxes and entering this information. They just want like, give me the template as close to what I want as I get and let me do the last 10%. And that's our goal with this big update. So that just came out um, last week, this big update where, you know, we, we really, you know, we segregate the types of like, you know, even like if you're saying like, I'm doing a product wait list, is it a wait list for a mobile app? Is it a wait list for a SaaS app? Is it a Kickstarter product that's coming out? And we try and get really specific about the type of campaign that you're building so that you don't have to set up as much uh, down the line. Yeah, it is really just uh, like your job seems to be now just how can we get people closer to a finalized pro like ready to go campaign uh, with just less and less work from them. And, and that's why something that we're working on right now is a, a template that I've been using. So for for my students who have gotten a lot of great results from using giveaways, like exactly uh, what verbiage uh, has been used to, to get us those results. And we're creating mm -hmm. a template too, just to make it so it's that much quicker to just get these content us off and going because there's a lot of marketing campaigns out there that would be so valuable for businesses to run and i th think like giveaways uh and contests of all sorts would, would be the number one thing that i would uh say for that where uh th they should absolutely do it they know they should but once they start getting set up if they don't know exactly where to go and uh, you know, how, how to solve the problem. If it's, if it's going to take them a couple of months to figure it all out, that's just yep. where a lot of it, you know, just never goes through. Um, yeah. So great to hear that a lot of the new features are all based around that. I do want to say real quick too, I, I should have mentioned this at the beginning, guys, we're going to give you a uh, even more details at the end of this episode on a giveaway we are doing right now. Uh, but mm -hmm. I'm going to give you the quick details right now for those of you uh, that you know might not catch the rest of the episode. So you can check that out in the description. Uh, but we just launched a giveaway, Josh and I uh, together, where uh, they are giving away uh, year subscriptions to Kickoff Labs, a Sure SM7B microphone like the one I'm using right now. It's a $400 microphone, top podcast uh, microphone. So we're giving away that. And we're giving a few copies of my social launch formula course away that teaches you exactly how to run a giveaway, not just to set up the kickoff lab side, but also the ad side, the email side, the running a sale part of it. The entire process is just follow that program and you can't really screw it up. So we're giving away a few copies of that and some coaching with me too. So check out the link in the description right now and fill that out while you uh, finish listening to this episode. But I'll, I'll let Josh give you some more details uh, at the end. Uh, for now, though, uh, Josh, tell me a little bit more of some recent success stories that you've seen over at Kickoff Labs uh, that you think are pretty noteworthy. Um, well, I mean, just this morning, I saw somebody that uh, seems like they launched a, uh, a campaign uh, or they're about to launch a campaign based on your class because it said social cam social bamboo campaign. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's a, that's probably somebody related to related to Derek. Um, hold on a second. Uh, so recent successes. Um, yeah. Uh, let me go back and look at the recent stuff. We have so many things uh, that people do. Um yeah, so uh, uh, we recently had uh, recently had a a team launch a um, they're launching a new product uh, called uh, called Maven Pet, um, and Maven Pet involved um, it's a hardware and software product. So basically, like if you imagine, like we all watch, uh, we all we we all have. Oh, I'm not wearing it. A uh, an Apple Watch or something that like tracks your activity, gives you some suggestions. 
So they're doing a similar hardware, like software product for pet owners to like put around on a smart, like a smart dog collar. Um, and they went through, um, and they went through and collected, uh, and, and collected, um, over a thousand new followers on Instagram and Facebook from running it as a contest and over 15,000 new leads. So, uh, 15,000 leads came through their contest, a thousand new followers on social, uh, on social platforms, um, And then in general, they said that the campaign had a really high engagement rate. So when they asked people at the end of the campaign to sign up for like to purchase the the pre-launch of the hardware, like they had a really good, what they considered a really great uh, uh, uptake in terms of people uh, people running it. And all they were giving away um, through the uh, through the campaign was uh, were two things. One was a chance to if you moved up in points to be closer to the the top of uh, to be closer to the top and a chance to purchase first. And they're giving away a couple of like free access to the demo and free subscription for X months to the service. Um, so they really weren't, you know, for those results, they weren't giving away the farm. They certainly weren't spending as much as it would have cost them if they were just running ads um, for this to get, you know, 10,000 or new lead, 15,000 new leads and uh, and thousands of new followers uh, across uh, across the campaign. Um, and, you know, this is like an example of like a campaign that we've used to like model, like we, we see successful campaigns like this, we're like, oh, we should turn this into a template and like make that easier for people to generate like the based on the success, uh, based on the success that they've had. So that's one of the, uh, one of the most recent, um, let me success, ask you about uh, that one though. First, had. yeah. Uh, did you say 10,000 leads? Uh, let me go back. Uh, you have 15,000 new leads. 15,000. And the yeah. thing about those leads is that these people entered to win that exact thing. So these aren't just random leads. These aren't people that are entering to win a $100 gift card to PetSmart, and hopefully they own a dog and want this product. These are people who specifically entered to win that product. And some of them did all of these extra entry steps, following them on Instagram, liking their Facebook page, just mm-hmm. so that they could buy the product sooner. So yeah. they're, the whole content test is based around, oh, I got to get all these points so I could buy sooner. And then once they win the opportunity to buy sooner, how much more likely are they to now buy? Because why else did they put in all of that effort? They're already committing themselves to that process. So the thing with the contest is you're not really just just building these 15,000 leads. These are as targeted as it could possibly get uh, without them being people who already bought. Like apart from people who literally buy the product, this is the next level uh, away from that in quality of leads. But by giving it away for free, it allows this viral component to get all these leads. So that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And like, as they were talking to me and telling me about the success story, it was, uh, it was fascinating because like, they also, like you said, they re- recognized pretty early on when they saw some of the highly engaged leads, like taking the action, sharing, following. And so they started looking up those people and they're like, oh, these people are like, you know, more influential in the space than we imagine. And so they created the pr- a private Facebook group just for like the VIPs, they call them in the, in the, in the head enter the contest before the contest was over, just so they could have a better relationship with these people who were super interested in the product. Cause they realized, as you said, because the giveaway wasn't for a hundred dollar Petco gift card. It was for just for their product, like, you know, for that. And for them, that has a lower cost. But then, like you said, the advantage of doing it that way is tying it as close to the product as it could be, is it was people who wanted that specific product in their audience. And then if people were showing that extra step, it was like, wow, these are people we should probably have an even closer connection with than just having them on our newsletter um, if they want. So they asked those people to invite and they created this private community of like the top 500 people out of that list. And so now they've got this like highly engaged, motivated, um, you know, private, you know, private community as well. Yeah, uh, very highly engaged. I I mean, you can send them tons of emails too in between the period that they enter and before the contest is over uh, while you have their attention. Uh, You know, they're going to check, hey, is this this, uh, the announcement of the you know, the winner. So they're, they're usually opening like all the emails and contact that you give them um, during that time. Mm -hmm. Um, A thing I want to ask about giveaways, I think uh, something that people are worried about sometimes with running giveaways is they say, is it just going to get a bunch of freebie seekers? What, What have you seen from that? I mean, you can, I mean, that's, as, as you pointed out before, like you can absolutely get um, people on a freebie seeker. And so we have, um, we've had people that they're running a contest and they say, Hey, it looks like all these entries are coming from one site. And there's, you know, a bunch of different sites out there where people, um, 
it's kind of two-sided, right? If you have a very broad product that has like, a, is meant to have a broad appeal, that may be okay. Like people that are looking to sign up because there's still people in the space that like, like, cause if you're selling, let's say, for example, a, um, a food or beverage product, right. That has broad appeal. Everybody needs to eat. Everybody needs to drink. You're selling something maybe unique. It's not even just like a diet product, but just like, you know, a new kind of granola bar, like, you know, my new kind of thing. And like people that enter, like you have a very broad audience that you're trying to hit. So it's okay. If you're getting some of those freebie people, if the Maven pet people trying to sell the specific pet product got a bunch of people from a freebie site because they decided to do like a Petco giveaway. Um, even Petco would have been pretty good, but let's just go all the way back and say they decide just to give away an Amazon gift card for entering. Or like a lot of people will say like, fill out our type form for an Amazon gift card. You know, and I, I think I cringe at that because I'm like, oh, really? You're going to get a bunch of people that just want the Amazon gift card and not really give you good product feedback if you're <laughs> filling out that uh, you're filling out that type form. Uh, sorry about that. Let me turn off this text if you can hear it coming oh, through. No um, but, and, and you're getting a bunch of people. So for them, a bunch of freebie seekers would be bad, but for like a more general product, like you're giving away a food item or beverage item, or like your product has a, like a broader appeal, not just a more specific niche, it can be a good thing. And so that's actually one of the changes we've made at Kickoff Labs. We used to automatically block all entries from known um, giveaway marketing sites they were out there. And then as we've gotten into it, we realized like people are, it's more nuanced and that there's some cases where people are like, yeah, like for Maven Pet, it makes sense to block if people are entering from those giveaway sites. But for a more general product, it doesn't make sense to do that because those people are still potentially, even if they might not be good leads, they're referring other leads that are good leads because they want to enhance their goal in the contest. Yeah. And so you're still getting that benefit of the follow on referral. And so now we've changed that feature where it's um, it's it's you can still choose to block all of them, or you could block a subset of them, or you could just say like I want to block these specific ones, but not the other ones, uh, because that an the answer to your question gets a lot more nuanced depending upon uh, it really depends upon your products, uh, or your products, your products market, and how specialized that market is, and whether or not you're giving away the actual thing, because uh, I think. This is a lot of rambling, but I think Maven Pet could have allowed the giveaway sites with the way they ran their contest, because as you pointed out, they still had to be interested in a pet collar. Like who cares if they win a pet collar, if they don't yeah. have a dog, right? Yeah. Like I think they still could have because they did the, the target, but if they'd done a more generalized prize, they probably would have wanted to like restrict it. So it was just their audience entering. And um, I hope that answers that. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah, definitely. So it sounds like the main way to prevent uh, just pure freebie seekers is just by giving away the prize itself. If you're giving away yep. the dog collar versus the pet smart gift card, you're just going to, you're not going to get people uh, that don't have a dog uh, entering. So you, that, that level yeah. is at least protected. And then the, the other thing uh, you guys have these giveaway site blockers. And I, I've seen that. I don't know exactly how that works. Maybe you can explain that a little bit more to me or uh, tell me if, if this is wrong, but essentially are there some giveaway sites that just find contests and they just like let their whole audience know like, Hey, we found these giveaways that you guys can enter. And they, they're, just like a part of their email list. Is that how it works? Yeah. I and mean, there's a bunch of different sites operate that way, but yeah, the basic concept is there are sites out there where it's just a community of people who want to be entered. They want to enter into interesting contests or contests where there's a whole bunch of different prizes or something. So you join, you're somebody, you join that site and you just go every day and you're like, here's the four contests to enter. And you've got your, you know, your email address you don't care about or whatever. And you just go and you enter the four contests or 10 contests that fit your area for the day. Um, so there are specific sites for it. There's also like specific subreddits uh, for people who track like different online contests that are, you, you could be eligible to win. Um, you know, and you can like, some of the sites are big enough. You can niche down and be like, I only want to enter giveaways that are like vacation prizes, like, you know, travel vouchers or whatever, or I only want to enter giveaways that have Amazon gift cards. And like, they will send you the list every day of like, here's the giveaways you should, um, you should enter. Um, and it really is of the platforms, uh, that, uh, of the platforms like us and other platforms that allow you to run giveaways. Um, it really seems like there's, there's sort of, there's the two sides of it because, that can be good or it could be bad for your contest, which is why we've switched the feature from like automatically always on saying when somebody comes and clicks a link from one of those sites, emails or from that site, we know where they came from. And so we were just saying like flagging them and saying like, 
maybe this isn't the best entry. Like we mark it as you know fraud, but the reason is like from a giveaway site, the entry, and we have in our default contest rules in that case, like, you know, must come from like a, like a valid, like, you know, use case for the product, or, you know, we're responsible for choosing who wins. Um, but I think, you know, we've realized we should be looser on that and say, give people the opportunity to say like, you know, where the, what referrals they want to, they, they want to treat specially or what referrals they don't want to treat specially. And so, um, because it is actually a strategy to market your promotion is you can go to some of these bigger sites. If you've got a broad product, or, you know, even if you, if you've got your giveaway as like being specific to your product and say, Hey, we're giving away our product. If anybody's interested. So it can be a good way to promote your contest as well to an audience that didn't, uh, that didn't, you didn't hear about before. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's good to know about these quote unquote freebie seekers. It's not like they uh, don't participate in capitalism sometimes because you have to. <laughs> so just, they're real people. It's they a good could way to put it. Refer other people yep. and uh, they could follow you. They could like your posts. Even if they don't want to buy uh, in the next couple of years, they still might buy eventually. They might buy one of your later products. Yep. And why not have them versus just the absence? of them. So it's not really something to be afraid of. It's just kind of knowing that some of these people only want to buy, want this product for free right now. They they don't want to yep. buy it, whether it's not on their budget or it's just like not uh, that high on their needs list. So they might not buy, but hey, they, they liked our content. They, they like it enough to enter this contest in the first place and they went out of their way yep. to do so. And now they're doing the other referrals. Like these are not bots that are, yep. are doing this. Um, so it's not anything to be worried about. And if you think about like your local home improvement show or county fair where you see these companies is giving away windows or giving away uh you know those things that go in your gutters to make it so the leaves can't go in there like they, mm -hmm. all these booths are like giving away just whatever product they're selling and a lot of times they'll have like pens and licorice and stuff like that that people can grab do you think they're really worried about like oh we got these people keep coming up and grabbing the licorice <laughs> our window yeah they're, they're not worried it's okay to have yeah some kind of magnet to your booth uh, that yep. brings other people because they now they're stopping, they're getting the licorice, they're talking to you. It's a little bit easier for the next people to come up because there's something going on there. Yep. So it, it really is, uh, it's not something to worry about because the people who are going to buy are still on that list too. So it just yep. gets a lot of other people. Uh, yeah. And I, I think there's something we said, like you said, I think that's a great way to put it is, is likening it to like that, you know, reason to come to the booth at like a fair, or like a, or at the Home Depot or whatever, like there's, there's, you know, some people who are just in it for the licorice, but like, there's also something to be said for that in real life, that social signal of like, you see people lining up somewhere and then it becomes more attractive to a human. Cause we like crave scarcity of things. We're like, Oh, is there something worth going to over there? And yeah. you go and you do it. And the same thing happens online where like, you know, if you're doing this giveaway and like maybe some of the people who end up following you on Instagram are, are ultimately your followers, you're still boosting your follower count and trend and starting to get trending or like getting people to post a hashtag and like seeing that hashtag get out there and that social signal, even if that person wasn't the right person for your product, somebody else is going to see their social signal and be like, oh, that product does seem interesting to me. And so there's a follow on effect, like you said, that like, you know, correlates to that in, in real life example of you see people excited about something at a, at a fair or something and then going and like trying it out themselves. Yeah, that's exactly right. How the Instagram algorithm works on the explore page, it, it, it even tells you this too, is a lot of times when you click on a post, it will say, this was referred to you because it was liked by your friend, like someone you yep. follow. A lot of that content is someone you follow, like this post is how it made it there. So yep. even just those couple likes, bring it to that next person, bring it to the next person. And it, it seems incremental, but uh, these things really add up uh, over time, especially on the grand scale of like getting 15,000 entries where they, they probably, uh, I, I don't know exactly what they did for their ads or how, how they got it started. They built a list beforehand, uh, but a lot of those were from shares, uh, probably a few hundred at least that they didn't have to uh, build that initial traffic that just comes with the uh, the share component of this. Mm -hmm. um, so what have we not covered, Josh? I know you've got some <laughs> other updates on that list of yours. Yeah, no, I mean- it's it's along those lines. So like we just covered the one of the ones I'd written down is like you know how we're approaching um, these giveaway sites. And we actually even related to that we have a, a blog post that should be out by the time you hear this podcast on on the Kickoff Labs blog about like how to properly market to these giveaway sites because there's 
good ways to go and some of the best sites, you know, to, to market to that might be beneficial to people. And so um, people can come to the kickoff labs blog and check that out site uh, that post. It'll be titled something along the lines of like, you know, how to market your giveaway to, to, uh, to promotion sites, promotional sites. It'll be titled something like that. Uh, but we'll probably put, have, be able to have the link for, um, and the, at when this comes out in the notes. Cool. Um the other one that people seem to be taking up already because we just shipped a lot of this stuff um, less than a week ago at this point um, is embedded, uh, the ability to do uh, more Im embedded style contests. So we've had the pop-up box for a while for contests. We've had dedicated landing pages for contests. Um, and we actually had embedded um, the ability to embed things as a contest on other sites. So like maybe you do a blog post to announce the contest, just having the contest embedded in that blog post um, as a widget um, or whatever you want to call it. There's all sorts of names that people call these things, but I'll, I'll call it an embeddable contest widget. Um, we call it our contest box uh, embedded. Um, but it wasn't obvious how to create it. So now when you create your campaign, when we ask like how you want to run your campaign as a landing page, as a pop-up, embed shows up as an option where it didn't before. And the options for installing that and getting it set up as embed have been simplified. And we're already seeing a lot more people um, in the less than a week since we've had it starting to run campaigns as an embedded um, style campaign, which you know, as, as a product guy, like you, you kick yourself and you say, ah, oh, you know, we've actually had this functionality for like three years now and like not really promoted it, but like, it's something we probably should have been promoting. Cause again, it removes some friction. You don't have to worry about setting up a whole landing page or a URL or anything like that. You don't have to, you know, it's just less you have to do if you can just like paste something inside your blog post and there's your contest inside your blog post that introduces it because you wanted to bring people to your blog anyway, or you wanted to bring people to, you mm -hmm. know, a specific page on your site in, in any case. And so, um, and so we're seeing already seeing some traction around people wanting to do, uh, do this, uh, the embedded uh, e contest type that we've made a lot easier to create. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, like just things uh, along the same lines, like my, goal for the product uh, in this year is just uh, is radical simplification and time reduction for people using it. So um, just less text to enter, uh, making it easier to make uh, editor changes. I've made, we've probably made like 30 or 40 updates to the page editor that some of them are just, you're probably never going to notice them. And maybe that's a good thing, but like, it just makes the experience smoother for building pages. Um, and then uh, and and then thinking and then thinking through some features uh, that should be out by time we have this. So um, the ability to we've already had a countdown on contest, but we never automatically turned off entries. But if you want to be really strict and say like just turn off entries on this date and show people a message that says like hey this contest ended go here um, for you know to hear about our next contest or just subscribe to hear about our next contest and have that show up automatically so you don't have to think about it on the date you just think about it when you set up the contest. Um, so that's a big, uh, a big improvement that's been customer requested by people is like, Hey, you know, for the end of a contest, can you do something to automate that? So I don't have to remember at, you know, 9 PM on, you know, Thursday, you know, February 30th to like go in and, and make that change and turn it off. Like you'll just turn off the entries and post my message for me. And then I can go back Monday morning and look at the entries or like Friday morning yeah. and look at the entries and not worry that like, Oh, I might be picking a winner that entered afterwards because we'll flag people. If you're still allowing um, entrance is like they came in after um, the, the deadline and you know, they probably, sh they would have seen the message and we'll stop people from allowing to like, you know, take the actions and earn points for actions. So the scoring will stop at that, um, at that time as well. Um, not something, you know, you don't have to do this for a campaign. It's something you would opt into for a campaign. Uh, but if you do opt into it, it's something I think for running giveaways that can make your life easier just to know that like, okay, I don't have to worry about it on this date. You're going to stop accepting things. Um, and then I can go back the day later and not worry about like a midnight on Eastern, <laughs> you know, timeline, which a lot of people do. They'll be like, yeah. it's midnight on Eastern. Midnight it ends. Time. And like, you don't want to be up at midnight turning off contest entries. <laughs> you want to wake up the next day to all of your entries. I will say usually people are so excited with how it goes that they are like fully attentive throughout the whole thing and refreshing <laughs> their uh, kickoff labs like every hour to see all the new entries. So I think oh, yeah, they, it, they are staring at the uh, at the end of the contest a lot of times. Yeah, it is true. I do. I will say like when we look at our analytics and the product, like um, probably the most popular page in the dashboard is is the leads page where you see the stream of leads coming in. 
and um and people just hit sit there and hit refresh on that leads page constantly like you can see it like they'll be like you can know what contests are getting close to ending if you look at our stats and you can see in google analytics like yep this page has been hit a hundred times by the same person in the last two hours <laughs> like they're just yeah. like refresh 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 and just like kidding the, to see the new leads coming in that's uh that's what you want to do when you're running ads to it, especially because then that's when you're uh, you're really seeing the constant stream come in. Um, so that that's been my favorite traffic source, Facebook and Instagram ads. And that's something that you guys can uh, find in either uh, my free course, how to build and monetize the following in 90 days or less. If you want just to, to see the, the basics of how those ad look ads look or the uh, social launch formula course that we're giving away has the like exact detailed uh, look of exactly how the ad should look and uh, the captions um, going along with them, everything like that. Uh, but what has been your uh, main source of tra traffic that you've seen fuel these giveaways the best? Is it Facebook and Instagram ads or is, or is it something else? I mean, I, I think it's, it's some, I mean, it's Facebook and Instagram, but not always just the ads. Like if you're looking at like overall across, like what we see for traffic coming in for these campaigns uh, and contests that people are running, um, the ads are big source. It's also like, if you're an existing company, the existing newsletters are a big source. So people uh, getting people to opt in that already follow the, are already part of the newsletter. And it's a step a lot of people forget is like letting your existing audience know you're running a contest. Cause you think like, oh, they're already signed up. I don't have to let them know. No, like these are the people you probably yeah. want to say, hey, here's these other social actions you can do that help us out, help you out in the contest and tell friends about. So that's a big driver of traffic. And then back to the Facebook and Instagram, not just the, um, not just the, it's similar to the, the existing audience, but not just the ads, but you know, if you're a member of Facebook groups that are related to your product, like letting, you know, depending on the rules of the Facebook group, the moderator, like letting those groups know if you run your own private Facebook group, like letting that group know. And so we get a lot of traffic from the Facebook groups that are specific to the product or problem that people are solving. Like parenting groups is a big one. If it's a product for like parents, like parenting groups, like drive a lot of traffic to contests for products that like deal with parents. And so like going into those groups and letting them know that like, Hey, there's this cool giveaway like here you can enter and like a little bit of legwork for people that maybe don't have the budget or don't think they have the budget to spend on, on Facebook ads and not that you need to spend a ton, but there's some people that are like, Hey, I've got the time. And if you've got the time and you want to put in some sweat equity, you can generate a lot of traffic by like identifying the right Facebook groups, the right Reddit subreddit groups for your product and like talking up to those communities. And then if you've got relationships, influencer marketing is still really, is really huge. And so if you've got relationships, like having somebody who's like an, you know, a, a micro influencer, like it doesn't have to be, we've talked about before, it doesn't have to be Kim Kardashian uh, to like drive traffic. It could just be somebody that has like 4,000 followers that are followers in the fashion space. If you've got a clothing store and like having that person mention your contest drives a lot of traffic um, you know, for your, for your business. Um, and it's worthwhile having those relationships with those influencers and forming them over time because, you know, or like what we're doing, like, you know, you're an influencer in the contest space. So we're working with you to like promote a contest and to promote, um, and, and to promote, uh, and to promote our product and promote your products together. And like, I think that's can be a win-win is like people that do partnerships that tends to work out really well, uh, for most of the contests we see. Yeah. So I was in, uh, uh, one of my students got a an influencer with 33,000 followers to post about it and they got her 1200 entries uh so it yeah did really really well and and this mostly happens on Facebook and Instagram like you mentioned regardless if it's paid or organic but i like yep. what you said about utilizing your current audience is really big and for those of you that aren't wanting to spend money on ads or tackle learning ads but would like to get a giveaway going um, that is still valuable. If you have an audience anywhere, this is how you can get an audience everywhere. Uh, very, uh, very effectively compared to all the other things you can do. You can probably relate that you do an Instagram story post to listen to my podcast. It, it just doesn't convert very well. Like far less than 1% ever want to like leave a platform to go somewhere else. It's very hard to get them to do so. And um, this is just a, a way to make it, hey, if you want an extra entry, 
Now you have to. Now you got to go to our other account and follow it. I can come out with a bunch of podcast episodes that tell you guys to follow me on Instagram. And it is a very small portion of you that do. Or if you do follow me, think about how many times you had to hear me say it before you <laughs> finally went and followed me. Whereas when I run this contest, it's like, hey, if you want the extra entry, you got to do it right now. And mm -hmm. uh, you won't even get the entry unless you click on it and go do it. So uh, mm -hmm. it, it just is a lot of times necessary in these phases of maturity where people are following plenty of people on all these platforms mm -hmm. they're not necessarily like eager to add new people that they're following but this is it's it's the reason to to do it now yep. apart from i told you to do so and you like my posts over there this is just the way to to for sure uh get that audience onto uh, all of the the platforms that you're looking to grow on uh, so i love that point that you made there you can totally do this organically and still get great results um, Josh, could you uh, sign us off by telling us about the contest again? Yeah, so absolutely. So our contest that we're running, uh, Derek and I, are is at grow.kickofflabs.com slash boss. And again, that's grow.kickofflabs.com slash boss. Um, and if you go there, um, you can enter to win. I think you did a great job with the prize descriptions earlier, but uh, the grand prize include like a coaching session with Derek, the Shore microphone, um, it's a year's subscription to Kickoff Labs. There's a great package of things. And then just we're giving away some weekly prizes. So, uh, you know, weekly prizes uh, include like some Kickoff Labs swag, like a cool mug that we've got, um, as well as uh, as well as well uh, some versions of, of Derek's class that you can get and download uh, for free. That's a $60 value, I think you said, or... 600. 600. Yes. Yeah, sorry. $600 value. Uh, so you can grab, uh, grab that as a, as a weekly prize. And, um, you know, there's just lots of reasons to lots of reasons to enter. Um, mostly I think it'd be fun. You could have a chance to get this cool stuff and like, then, uh, you can follow up with uh, Derek and I afterwards. So we'll be following up with everybody in the competition and just seeing like how it went, you know, what we can do better next time. And, uh, and you know, just get engaged. And even if you think I never win these things, I don't care about any of the prizes. If you listened to this far in the episode, you probably want to learn about do. how to run a contest. <laughs> you should probably go participate in one yeah. and just put yourself in the customer's position. See yep. what you like and don't like. See how the graphics look. See how it's worded by the guy yep. who runs the company uh, yep. for Kickoff Labs. Uh, like who better to... Uh, you know, model off of uh, how this contest is run. So go enter it, even if you think you've got no chance to win and uh, just go pay attention to how the whole thing is run and see if it's something that you want to incorporate in your own business. Josh, thank you so much for coming on today. Amazing yeah, value as always. Can't wait to uh, have you on the next time. Yeah, we will do. <laughs> have a great day, guys.